This screen demo introduces an educational function of Visual FEA, related to intra-element interpolation of nodal values using shape functions. This feature of the program is intended to help understand the nature of the shape functions and computational aspects of interpolation. The shape functions are given for each degree of freedom determined by the shape, order and type of an element. The characteristics of element modeling can be examined through the graphical representation. They include the inter-element continuity related to compatibility of the shape functions between adjacent elements. Users can easily explore and understand the order of inter-element continuities, such as C0 and C1 continuities, using the interactive graphical manipulation. This function works only with planar elements. Let's take a plane strain case first. Select new item from the file menu, to create a plane strain model. Then, project setup dialog pops up for the setup of a new project. Click plane strain radio button. Click OK button to complete the project setup. Let's make an example model with four mesh regions of different element shape and order. Create the boundary curves for the mesh regions, using the straight line tool. Each region is to be defined as a quadrangle bounded by four straight lines. Adjacent two regions share a common boundary. Thus, all the regions are connected without gaps. Turn off the grid as it is not necessary any longer. Select all the boundary curves. And divide each of them into four segments. Select four edges mesh item from mesh menu. The dialog pops up for four edge mesh generation. Set the element type to four node quadrilateral element. Double click a mesh region. Then, the region is filled with four node quadrilateral elements. Repeat the same procedure for the rest of the regions, to generate meshes of three and six node triangular elements. And eight node quadrilateral elements. Now, the model is completed with mesh regions of four different element types. Close the four edge mesh generation dialog. Press node selection button. Select all nodes to confirm the number of nodes generated for each type of elements. Choose shape function item, from FEM simulation submenu, of solve menu. Shape function window opens. Let's adjust, the size and position of the model image so that no part of the image may be hidden behind the shape function window. If you place the screen cursor over a three-node triangular element, the shape functions of the element are graphically displayed on the shape function window. The image changes immediately following the cursor movement, to show the shape functions relevant to the element type, at the position of the cursor. Thus, we can examine all types of elements included in the model. Namely, 3 node triangular elements, 6 node triangular elements, 4 node quadrilateral element, and 8 node quadrilateral element. The upper part of the shape function window is used to display the concept and information related to mapping of the element. This drawing illustrates one to one correspondence between the actual element shape in Cartesian coordinates and the normalized regular shape in natural coordinates. Let's examine the case of six node triangular element. As the cursor moves within an element, there appear three red lines passing through the point of the cursor. The lines indicate the natural coordinates or triangular coordinates psi, eta, and zeta, respectively. The Cartesian and natural coordinates are updated instantly following the cursor movement on the model image. At the same time, the coordinate lines are drawn over each of the shape function images. Mapping of the actual element with the regular triangle is shown on the shape function window. The numerical values, under each of the shape function images, represent the value of the function, and its derivatives, at the point of the cursor. The X and Y Cartesian coordinates are displayed under the image of actual element shape, and the triangular coordinates, psi. E2 and zeta are shown under the regular triangle. The natural coordinates are also represented in terms of area coordinates. The Jacobian matrix, its inverse and determinant are shown in numerical values. 
Let's move the cursor onto a quadrilateral element. There appear two red lines indicating the normalized intrinsic coordinates, psi, and eta at the cursor point. The quadrilateral element is mapped with a square, in which the natural coordinates are normalized between minus 1 and 1. The points of numerical integration can be referenced in both Cartesian and natural coordinates. Check integration point box. Then, the integration points are X marked. Place the cursor over an integration point. Then, the point is marked with a circle, and the Cartesian coordinates and the natural coordinates are displayed. The shape function image is also shown with the function values and derivatives at the integration point. The resulting Jacobian matrix and determinant are displayed. They are used in computing the element stiffness matrix by numerical integration. The scheme of numerical integration can be altered. Let's take an example with the 8-node quadrilateral element. Choose Integration Scheme item from Solve menu. Integration Scheme dialog pops up. Choose 8-node quadrangle item from the drop-down list. The radio button 2x2 is turned on to show the current setting of 4-point integration. Click 3x3 button to change the integration scheme to 9-point integration. Click OK button to close the dialog. Bring the cursor onto the model image. The 9 points for 3 by 3 integration scheme are marked on the 8 node quadrilateral element. If you place the cursor on a nodal point, then there appears a blue tip box, with the function value, phi, at the node. The tip shows that phi equals 0. It is because nodal values have not been assigned yet. There are two methods of assigning the nodal values. Click the nodal point by pressing the right mouse button. Then, a small text box pops up. The nodal value can be entered using this text box. Click the close button. Once an element is assigned with nodal values, it is represented by surface segments. Repeat the procedure for any desired nodes. We may confirm the assignment from the three-dimensional view of the model image. Use the virtual trackball to rotate the image for three-dimensional view. The vertical coordinate, that is, the z-coordinate of the model represents the state of the function assignment everywhere in the model. Another method of assigning the nodal values is to drag the nodal point in the z-direction. Click the nodal point and drag it, with pressing the left mouse button. Then. The blue tip shows the changing nodal value, while the node is being dragged. The two methods of nodal assignment, that is, keyboard input and the mouse dragging can be alternated. The function value within an element is determined by interpolation of the nodal values using the shape function. There are four options of rendering the overall distribution of the function values over the model. They are wireframe, outline, shading and contour rendering. Let's display the contour rendering first. The part of the model assigned with the function value is represented by a contour image. The shape functions are also expressed by contour images. Let's change the option to shading. Then, the model image as well as the shape function image is rendered by shading images. In order to simplify the image, exclude the base plane edges option and node leg option from the displayed items. Rotate the model image using the virtual trackball. Resize the image using the zoom dial. Pan the image by mouse dragging, as desired. And move the screen cursor over an element. Then, a yellow tip box shows the function value at the point of the cursor. The values of the shape functions are also displayed below the shape function images. The nodal values of the element are displayed in the table at the left top corner of the main window. The value at the cursor point is determined by interpolation of the nodal values using the shape functions. Following the cursor movement, information about the interpolation is updated instantly to reflect the values at the cursor point. Placing the cursor over an integration point shows the data used in the numerical integration, Jacobian matrix, its inverse and determinant. The shape function image can be rotated. 
press the rotation tool and drag the cursor with pressing the left mouse button. Then, the shape function image rotates following the cursor movement. The scale of shape function value can be adjusted, using the slider control. Switch the scale option to the model image radio button. Now, the slider control works for the distortion scale of function value in the model image. The size of shape function image can also be adjusted, using another slider control. The image size can be enlarged, or reduced, and repositioned as desired. Again, the function value within an element can also be examined. Using this educational function, we can study the concept of inter-element continuity across the boundaries between adjacent elements. The model image shows the discontinuity across the boundaries between the elements with different orders. For example, the function values are not continuous at the boundaries between three node elements and six node elements, and similarly between four node and eight node elements. On the other hand, the continuity is maintained at all boundaries between the elements with same order. This demonstrates characteristics of the inter-element compatibility at the element boundaries. The distribution of function derivatives can also be examined. Let's switch the option to partial DeFi over DX. Then, the model image, as well as the shape function image, show the state of the first derivative with respect to X. The nodal values of the derivatives are displayed in the table, at the left top corner of the main window. The model image and shape function image, show the value of the derivatives, determined by the interpolation at the cursor point. It should be noted that, the model image shows the discontinuity at every element boundary. Similarly, the derivative with respect to Y, and the second derivatives can also be examined. This example indicates that, the inter-element continuity can be observed only for the function value itself, but not for the function derivatives. This type of continuity is called C0 continuity. Thus, the elements included in this plane strain model are called C0 element. In comparison with C0 continuity, let's examine the case of C1 continuity. Plate bending or shell models are generally based on C1 elements. So, C1 continuity will be examined using a simple plate bending case. Close the current session, and start a new one. In the project setup dialog, set the analysis type to plate bending. Now, a new project starts from blank space. Create the boundaries of the quadrilateral region by four straight lines. Divide each of the boundary curves into three segments. Select four edges mesh item from mesh menu. The dialog pops up for four edge mesh generation. Set the element type to four node quadrilateral element. Double click a mesh region. Then, the region is filled with four node quadrilateral elements. Now, it is ready to study the shape functions of plate bending elements. Let's start the shape function simulation again. Shape function window opens. Place the cursor on a plate bending element. Displayed in the window are the shape functions for the plate bending element. There are 16 shape functions for a 4 node plate bending element. Placing the cursor out of the model image, changes the display in the upper part of the window. The symbolic expressions illustrate how the shape functions are formed. Each of the shape functions is obtained by multiplying the two Hermitian interpolation functions, one is a function of psi, and the other is a function of eta. The matrix denoted by H is the Hessian matrix, which is similar to the Jacobian matrix in the plane strain case. This 5x5 five five matrix is used to transform the Cartesian coordinates into natural coordinates, and vice versa. The transformation is necessary in the process of computing the stiffness matrix of the plate bending element. When the cursor is brought into an element, the symbolic notations are converted into the numerical values. The Cartesian coordinates, natural coordinates, Hessian matrix, and its inversion at the point of cursor are expressed in numerical values. 
There are three nodal variables at each node in the plate bending model. They are one vertical deflection and two deflection angles in x and y directions. The yellow tip box shows the vertical deflection, delta z, and slope angles, theta x and theta y at the point. The displayed values read all zero, because none of the nodal values are not yet assigned. Let's assign the nodal values as in the previous case of the plane strain model. Place the cursor over a node. The blue tip box shows the currently assigned nodal values. Click the nodal point by pressing the right mouse button. Then, a small pop-up dialog appears with three text boxes for the delta Z, theta X and theta Y. The nodal values can be entered using these text boxes. Click the close button. The assignment of the nodal values changes the model image. Repeat the same procedure for another node. Click the node with right mouse button, and enter the nodal values in the text boxes. Click the close button to complete the data assignment. Rotate the model image in order to confirm the state of nodal assignment. Let's use another method of assigning the nodal value. Select a node, and drag the node in the vertical direction. Then, the model image is deformed following the cursor movement, and the blue tip box shows the changing value of the delta Z. It should be noted that, two handles are drawn at the node. These handles represent the slopes in X and Y directions, respectively. The slopes can be adjusted directly using the handles. Click one end of the handle and drag it. Then, the slope of the model changes. The text boxes for theta X and Y display the changing slope values. Thus, the nodal values can be assigned to the selected node directly using mouse dragging. When the assignment of nodal values is completed, the vertical deflection of the model can be visualized in four different forms. Click contour button for contour image. Or click shading button for a shading image. In order to simplify the image, turn off base plane edge and node leg options. Adjust the image size. And bring the cursor onto the model image. The interpolation of the deflection at any point within an element can be visualized by placing the cursor on the element. Turn on the integration point option to display the numerical values of the shape functions and Hessian matrix at the integration point. Let's examine the inter-element continuity of the plate elements. The model image shows that the deflection is continuous across the boundaries between adjacent elements. Next step is to examine the first derivative of the deflection, that is, the slope in x and y directions. Click partial defy over dx button. The model shows the distribution of the first derivative with respect to x, and its continuity at all boundaries. Adjust the shape function scale. And the distortion scale of model image. We may alternate the view rotation and scale adjustment for better examination of the continuity. Place the cursor at a point within an element again. The first derivative at the point is evaluated by interpolating nodal values using the shape function derivatives. The display shows this numerical values involved in the evaluation of the first derivatives. Click partial defy over dy button. The model shows the distribution of the first derivatives with respect to y, and its continuity at all boundaries. So far. We have confirmed the continuity of the slope in x and y directions across element boundaries. Now, let's display the second derivatives, which correspond to the curvature of the deformed shape. Click partial d square phi over dx square. The shading image represents the distribution of the curvature of the deformed shape in x direction. The image shows that the curvature is not continuous across the elements. Similar discontinuity is observed in the images of the other second derivatives.
Through this example, we confirmed that inter-element continuity is maintained, up to, the first derivatives, or the slope of the plate bending model. Thus, the plate bending elements are C1 continuous. However, all the plate bending elements are not C1 continuous. There exist C0 or C2 continuous plate bending elements. This is the end of the screen demo.